Hello, Leapers. This is Chris, and I'm here with Matt and Albie, and we are thrilled to bring you three very special guests today. Joining us on the Quantum Leap podcast are Raymond Lee, Caitlin Bassett, and Nanrissa Lee. Guys, welcome back to the Quantum Leap podcast. I don't think we've had all of you on since, I think, the premiere of the series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's good it's to be back. <laughs> it's been a while. So. Yeah, it certainly has, but uh, it's a long time uh, overdue. We're we're happy to have you back. And, uh, you know, so much has gone on since we talked to you last. We had the whole first season um, played out, and uh, we saw the denouement of that. And then we started the second season on some shaky footing with, with the writer strike and the actor strike. So um, I, I want to talk about so much, but uh, I, I think that um, – Maybe we just start sort of at the beginning. Um, Since the end of season one, season two has been a really different kind of show. So I I just want to ask a question to the group. Uh, And maybe we begin with Ray. It's going to be two parts. And if you guys can all answer this, I mean, since season two is so different from season one, uh, what aspects of this new season have you enjoyed the most regarding your character? And what aspects have you found uh, the most surprising or challenging? Well, I, I think it's 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 what you said. It, uh, it's about the character, um, and I mean, for me personally, I I really enjoy character work and character based stories above anything else. And uh, when the plot can supplement that, it, it gets even better. But I love that we're just going into what makes us tick and what makes us um, in survival circumstances. What makes us weak and what makes us strong and how we can use each other in different ways and how we can lean on the dynamics of each relationship to pull us through the situations that we're going to be in. Because at this point now, our audience knows that every episode is going to be a new leap. But the challenging part is how we can layer in a serialized relationship-based story. And this second season, I think our writers really took the time to look at our characters and develop it and flesh it out and put us in even more outrageous circumstances to see how we can keep our head above water. And I think the most surprising part is seeing how these stories uh, continue to be revealed to us. Um, you know, it's it was already exciting in the first season to see every episode that would fall into our inbox and be like, Wow. But now with, you know, especially with our two series regulars added to the mix, it's uh, there's just a a whole new dimension of dynamics that we can play. And it's looking through a prism from a different angle now. And it's really nice. The, the, the shades that we get to layer in. That's great. Kate, how about you? I mean, the time off was nice. Um, (laughs) (laughs) No, I mean, I, I, my favorite part, is might be a weird answer, but it's, it's, we get a little less of me and a little more of, of Nanrissa and Ernie and, and Mason. I think this shows strength. I've said this before, but this shows strength is in its ensemble cast. That's what makes it truly different aside from the fact that, you know, we're, we're, we've moved forward in technology. Um, is what makes this a, a different show makes this our version of this. And, and I think it's nice when, the, when the, audience starts to have shorthand relationships with these characters you're like "Ooh, it's a legal issue or there's a secure like that's gonna be jen she's gonna crush that you know what i mean and and oh or like we got some like nerd stuff like that's probably gonna be mason today you know and like oh there's something military like addison's that's probably her bag so i like that and i'm very excited for that to continue um because it, it just allows more space for for story which I think is 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 something that we need to lean into more um, when when it comes to our main cast. Hmm. And Nanrissa, I think the advantage that we had to season two was rolling right in from one because by then I feel like we had really hit a stride. But talking with Martin and Dean, right before we started season two, they told us that they were going to be focusing more on relationships and sort of what was going on, of course, bringing in um, Peter and Eliza um, with, you know, our mains with with Rhett, with Ben and with Addison. But um, but I think it was really 
it, it, we all had such a good time because I think coming in, in and out of the imaging chamber, taking turns, you know, being holograms, it, I, it felt like what Caitlin said, we were really able to sort of like start to define out like what each of the team members bring to the table as our own personal strengths and being able to help Ben on the leap sort of uh, bringing a different perspective because obviously we are all quite different. Um, and so I think that was really exciting. Uh, hopefully there's a, a bit more of that. Um, I'll always take any chance to, to, to leave headquarters. I love headquarters, but <laughs> sometimes I call it the cave. I'm like, oh God, they let me out of the cave today. It's going to be so fun. But like, and come and shoot with Ray and meet the guests. And um, that's always fun because uh, it was something that, that we didn't really get to do very much during season one. So it's been a great time. I'm intrigued. You, you've all mentioned the ensemble uh, piece, and a couple of you have mentioned the 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 additional uh, actors that have been added to that ensemble this year. Obviously, you guys have been together since the start, very tight knit group, and you're used to bringing in new guest characters every week. But how did that differ bringing in Peter and Eliza as new regulars? How did that how did that change the dynamic for you behind the scenes? Um, behind the scenes, I was, it was great to just have essentially, um, a recurring physical person in my reality. Um, somebody that could be, um, sharing a continued storyline with and talk about how we can build this, um, and how we can, you know, slow burn some things too. Um, and you know, there, Peter and Eliza are, are both seasoned vets and they know how to play out a storyline best to um, create the best. So basically like when you have a, like one episode guest star, you're really trying to squeeze in an arc really quickly. Right. I mean, and for the top of top of show guests, they have a pretty great journey ahead of them. Um, but it is retained within, you know, what eight scenes or something like that and you have to really flesh out an arc but to know the trajectory of a six seven episode arc is very different for an actor to navigate and the fact that you can have those conversations knowing where we should end up um is really exciting and those that's a conversation that i didn't get to have in season one with our guest stars and so um behind the scenes that that stuff is really exciting to ex excavate with seasoned actors have you had that discussion with both Eliza and with Peter? Because I know you're dealing more with the Ben Hanna stuff primarily, but you did get to do that one episode with Peter. And I thought you guys were great together. Yeah, thanks. I, I loved working with Peter. Um, and it's a side of Ben that you don't get to see, which is a jealous Ben, a Ben that is um, just a little bit, uh, there's resentment there. There's a little bit of anger there, but it's generally just like, you know, you're, you're sleeping with my girl. Um, and to see how petty Ben could be was also really fun too. Also didn't want to make him too petty where it just becomes <laughs> like, you know, like what is wrong with this guy? But it's fun to, to toggle that, you know, and to find the good balance. Um, and we had the best writers and producers on set to maintain all of that. But yeah, it was fun working with Peter. Um, you know, he's got a different sensibility. He's got a different tempo to him. There is a there is a gentle softness to him that can really combat Ben in his most volatile moments. And so you see a pretty stark contrast, in my opinion, in the type of person that Addison could be interested in, which is also just a great shade to see what Addison could be interested in, especially with the three-year gap. For a while, uh, it was no longer um, Caitlin as as your hologram. It was different people, and you guys were separated more, and that obviously affects real-life filming days. So did the relationship change between the actors on the set when the relationships between the characters changed even slightly? For me, yeah, of course. I mean, I went from having Caitlin nearly every day to having Caitlin, like, every other day to every three days. And we shared, I've logged more hours acting with Caitlin than anyone in my life. And you, your physical friend is leaving set. And so now, um, you know, I love working with our new guests. I, I personally really like actors and 
you know, working with different processes and uh, like, I get them because I am them. <laughs> um, and so I enjoy that, but it's also really nice to have um, a real consistent friend with you every day on set too. So yeah, it was, it's an adjustment, but it's an adjustment for Ben as well. So it's it kind of bled into one another, one informs the other. Um, but that's the great stuff that we can use for what we do. Um, and just to toss in a little anecdotal story. So Ray and I knew that we were going to be like broken up for a while. And, and so we were like, well, to thank, you know, everybody, we're going to get the, the crew, like a, like a, it was like a donut truck or I forget what it was. I think it was the beignet truck. Beignet, yeah. It was the beignet truck. And it was, and it's like going to be from Ray and Caitlin. And, and we've done it a couple of times. We tend to split things and, and send it up for the crew. <laughs> But Ray scheduled this one and he scheduled it the day after I left set and was not going to be in the leaps. <laughs> not, not purposeful at all. Um. <laughs> I was like, so this feels like more of a celebration. of. <laughs> I had them retype the sign just from Ray and, just and from Caitlin, just a real tiny print in the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> and with a question mark and Kate. <laughs> RIP. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's but it was really fun. I that was the day it was the last day on um what's his name? Who's in four? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Tim Matheson. Um, Tim Matheson. Yeah, Tim Matheson was on set. It was the last day Tim was on set. And I was like, all right, Ray, well bye. I'll see you in a few weeks. And someone someone oh, just popped in so to join us. We have an additional guest. Oh, no, no, no. pressure. <laughs> All right. Welcome. So for, for those of you listening at home on the podcast feed who can't see the video, we just had the arrival of Mason Alexander Park. Mason, welcome to the Quantum Leap Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so I'm so excited to get to pop in mid. Yeah, don't worry, it was just me say. talking, which you've never worried about before. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> usually yeah, Caitlin rambling, 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 rambling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would have been weird it if I came been. in when it was like that Raymond would have been a So I'm kind of, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would have made us. So um, thank you so much for being able to make it, Mason. I know that your time might be limited. Uh, I think maybe I'll throw a question to you that I threw to the group at the beginning of the call. Um, being that season two has a, a little bit of a different dynamic than season one, I had asked everybody what they liked most about sort of the new paradigm that you guys are under this season and um, what has been the most surprising or challenging with, with, with the new setup. Well, I think that I like... Um, the platform that it's sort of given us for further character development um, for everybody. You know, we're not as tied to our roles this season. We're not as um, tied to the structure of like the first few episodes, which really had to set up kind of this leap of the week. These are the people's different functions. This is how their anxiety works. Like, <laughs> um, and all of that still exists and all of that still, you know, is, is useful and carries through season two, but we have so many more opportunities to go and kind of do these little sidebar one-off adventures or actually get into the imaging chamber and utilize different aspects of our skill sets um, in each episode. So I think it gives the audience a nice chance to get to know um, all of the characters uh, and how they interact with each other a little better because previous to this season, we really, you don't really see anybody except for Caitlin interact with Raymond. So a lot of his recollections or a lot of his relationship to the, you know, the people that are in um, the, the headquarters is all based in sort of like talking about them or in memory. And it's really been fun to watch like Ernie actually go in and have, you know, conversations with Ray and, and to me, for me to be able to do it and Rissa. Um, so I think that's my favorite part of, of this new kind of uh, second chunk of, of quantum stories. I see. And just to that point, it's a question that I had for all of you. Um, with these increased character relationships that we're seeing in the season that don't necessarily rely on a season-long arc, because I feel like a lot of your interaction hinged on 
the mystery box of the first season because you always had the reveals and you had to get to the next plot point. Now that you can breathe a little bit and interact with each other more organically, are the character pairings that um, you want to delve into a little bit more that you haven't been able to? And I guess that's a question for all of you because you're able to interact so much more freely with each other than you had been in the first season. That's a good question. Um, I, you know, I, I'll take as many moments to <laughs> mess with Ray as I possibly can. I think I spent the first, the first year of shooting was me menacing uh, Nemrissa mm -hmm. and Caitlin and Ernie, like just driving them up a wall every single day. So when I get to do that to Ray and give him the full experience <laughs> of the show, I think that that, that better him as a performer. I think that it um, it, <laughs> it it makes the show better, you know. Mason so has a I, remarkable yeah. ability to bring you to the immediate present always, because Mason might be the most present and alive person that I know, and um, it's great when, as an actor, you forget your lines because because you're you're messing around right up until the point where they yell action and you've forgotten everything you're about to do and you're just flying off of instinct and that is mason every time um and it really if if mason's performance ever seems nuanced and accidental it's because we're i'm constantly accidentally finding my lines in our scenes um <laughs> and mason still holds the trophy for my favorite hologram moment when they appear severed because they <laughs> appeared in a desk <laughs> and they look down and go <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's it's um it's the the dynamics that we get to play is remarkably close to i feel like how we are with each other in real life and i think that's a strength to our um, writing team and the people that can understand our dynamics and also um, just intrinsically the the relationships that we might have developed with each other as well like you know Nance feels like my sister like it's no coincidence that we have the same last name um, mm -hmm. you know and it just it's there's a there's a brother sister relationship there um, so yeah and Ernie has the the unmistakable presence of a mentor. And so you have to have that grounding personality to pull you through some very specifically difficult situations. And I, I'm just so um, impressed with what our producers and writers have been able to create for us. And Nan, I know that you've been doing a lot more um, comedic stuff this season than you were last season, and also leaning into the relationship. Uh, Jen and Ian seem to be quite the pairing this season. Would you like to discuss a little bit more about uh, your character and how, how Jen has evolved? Jen and Ian have always been fortunate enough to be paired together a lot in headquarters. And I think relatively early on, we sort of figured out this dynamic. I know I've thrown it out there once or twice before that I do feel like we are like the thinking man's Tweedledee and Tweedledum sometimes. Um, <laughs> we are very smart, but like we just get into trouble a little bit and we have our own shorthand. We have our own inside jokes. And, um, and so I think I do think that credit to the writers, as Ray said, that, that they were able to pick up on that relatively early um, and continue to sort of flesh that out. And we get just get to have more fun uh, in season two. Um, I definitely agree with what Ray said in terms of the dynamic between he and I personally crossing over for our characters as well as well. Something it wasn't anything we ever discussed uh, and it wasn't anything um, that felt like either of us were actively doing it just we just sort of fell into that sort of relationship to each other which i feel like is kind of the best way <laughs> you know and and then with the writing right everything sort of seemed to flow in that direction i do think that people notice that when we are on set together and then also we just the in between takes little things that get um probably that get noticed by writers or or uh even in the dailies or something just us needling each other. I think there was one day where I was just always on guard trying not to get a wet willy from Ray or just things like that. And those things <laughs> sort of that dynamic gets incorporated a little bit in the character. I think too, also just because um, Jen always had a bit of comedy 
um, in, in her writing uh, since the beginning, being able to play to a little bit more of that, especially in the leaps has been really fun because I do find that the tone for the leaps is slightly different. It's just, there's just a little bit more room for comedy um, in a different way. If comedy comes in headquarters, usually it's, it's tight and terse because we're always sort of racing against the clock. So it's little asides and this and that, and there's all this stuff going on, but, but this one thing really quick and whatever, and then we're off. But in the leaps, it's, you just have a bit more room for a different style, which has been really fun. Uh, Mason, uh, this season, we've seen more of the appearance of Rachel. Uh, can you tell us more about that? And uh, what's that like uh, having that at work and at home and everything? <laughs> it's, it's it's so much fun. Um, yeah, I we I didn't really know how many episodes it was going to turn into, which has been sort of like the the ongoing lovely mystery. Because originally, like we we had discussed, I think even during the pilot, maybe trying to write um, someone uh, in for, for Ian to have like a kind of counterpoint, some sort of partner. Um, and then, you know, they all, they all had met Alice during the shooting of that. And um, in my head, you know, like everybody always makes like nice little sweet empty promises. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're just kind of like, yeah, we'll get you in that thing someday. The amount of people that have told me like, oh yeah, we'll put you in that, you know, you're like, it's never gonna happen. Um, and so like maybe two weeks before or a few weeks before we got close to the episode last year, you know, they sort of brought it up to me again and they were like, Hey, so we're, you know, thinking of writing, uh, this character, Rachel into blah, 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 blah. Um, and so it was really fun. It was fun to do it. It was, you know, the one episode in that year, it felt like a one-off. And then when they were pitching their idea for season two, to me of like how it, you know, might shape up. Um, she was a big part of it. And that was super exciting. Like this idea that even a after all of that time had passed that these characters had sort of reconnected and maybe um, apologized to one another and actively like tried to make things work. Um, because it's nice for Ian to have, I think, someone to uh, refer to or to utilize that isn't directly involved in the program. Um, mainly because we're all biased. Like we all have such heavy emotional investment in getting Ben back home, no matter what it takes. And I think she's a little more pragmatic and a little more like on the side of what's best for Ian or on the side of what might be best for, you know, um, other, other aspects of, of uh, the program in the world. Uh, and so it's, it just, it's cool. It, it, it creates another avenue for really fun storytelling that I'm, I'm grateful that, uh, I get to work with the scene partner that, you know, I, I love working with. A question for Nan. Uh, are we going to find out much more about what's happened to Jen over the last three years? Because I feel that, to, to Mason's point, we have we we know how that relationship's gone. We've certainly seen plenty of uh, what's happened with Caitlin's character. When are we going to find out more about the, the Jen gap? I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I think... I think Jen's got a pretty colorful life outside of the program. Uh, but I, I will say, I think, and I would love to delve into that. And particularly also like um, uh, if we see some of maybe, you know, something like her past or if she had sort of dipped back into, um, you know, a little bit of an old lifestyle or something like that. But I, I think, you know, I'd like to show some, but at the same time, Jen is the kind of person that like, she keeps her cards close to her chest. And I think she's, she's a bit compartmentalized. And I don't know that she really wants, uh, the T as close as the, they're the closest people to her. I don't know that she wants anybody in her life to know all aspects of her life. So I suspect we'll see, you know, maybe slivers here and there. I don't know if um, if Jen would ever really be willing to expose herself fully to uh, to um, to the rest of the team. But but maybe I hope I hope we get to see, you know, some some stuff, a little bit of Jen's origin story or or again, perhaps what she had been up to um, in the three years, because we did talk about that a little bit Um uh, I did talk about that a bit with Martin and, and Dean, but, um, but I, as far as I know, I, I, I have no idea what's coming up. They probably got it in their back pockets, you know? <laughs> Exciting. Um, 
for all of you, uh, what was it like coming back to set after the strike? Uh, and just, was it any different or was it like the next day almost? Uh, maybe Caitlin, start with you. Oh, I think both is the good answer to that. I think it absolutely felt we all, you know, jumped right back in. Um, we had stayed in contact. Most of the cast had seen each other in, you know, at least a couple of times in the interim, uh, which was really nice. But there were some, you know, key position changes in the crew. And, and so things did feel different when we got back. Um, but I think everybody was just so overwhelmingly happy to be there that and, and like, you know, remember, we did 26 episodes in a row the first time like we went to work and then never left so <laughs> we were all pretty smoked by the time we wrapped uh nomads um and now you know then the world really it just really hurt you know there's a lot of people hurting hollywood hurt a lot um so to just go back and feel that love and feel those friendships and be like okay you know i don't know what's going on in the rest of the world but here we can do this we can do quantum leap for these five more episodes and and you know what i mean and, and give it the best we can that felt i think that was my my primary feeling yeah i mean there was definitely an overwhelming feeling of gratitude all around and just like i think we were just all smiling from ear to ear and I, I remember being tremendously nervous that first take um, back, just wondering if Ben Song is still there. Um, you know, we have to continue on without a hiccup. So for the viewer, it's seemingly just another week has passed. But for me, it's felt like a, a whole lifetime. You know, I, I, I feel like I, I, I grew as a person over the strike atus. And uh, I feel like uh, want, wanting and needing to layer in a different Ben without making it too obvious that Ben is evolving along with Raymond was a bit of a challenge in the first few takes and the first couple of scenes. Uh, and like Caitlin mentioned, we had some key crew members also swap out. So that was interesting to adjust to. But I couldn't sleep the night before. I think I got like three hours of sleep. And then I looked over at Martin, who was there for to give a, a welcome back speech. And he's like, I couldn't sleep. And he's like, I don't Could you sleep? And I'm like, why were you nervous? And I'm like, you're not in front of the camera. He's like, I don't know. I was just so nervous. It's anything. He was waiting for anything to go wrong. Um, so yeah, there was a certain, but it was a good kind of nerves, you know, like we don't want to, we don't want to get up kind of nerves. And it was, it was great. When you said you couldn't sleep and you looked over and Martin. Yeah, we both were just, we were trying our best. I called him at 11 o'clock to come over so we could spoon and hope he back. You were like, I really need Yeah, could Martin. you bring over your CBD? Oh, that was Martin. So uh, I've got melatonin, warm cup of milk. Nothing I'm worse. shipping this right now. <laughs> this is beautiful. No wonder this show is so good. This is why you're yeah. really yeah. You gotta get time. the spooning. <laughs> spooning with the Garo. I'll tell you what, Mason in season three, Ray and Martin are gonna be like Bert and Ernie. They're just gonna live together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fully living together. <laughs> I support it. Agreed. I think it's I think it's what's best. That's all that show, matters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to be very yeah. like symbiotic. Sleeping. <laughs> physically <laughs> with one another. <laughs> yeah, just sleeping next to each other. In season two, we have two new cast members. Did it ever feel like, did you ever have some insecurities of, oh no, they're adding more people because they don't like me because I know everybody has a little bit of insecurity and was there worries or was it more of a just uh, a bigger family kind of thing? I think that every day. <laughs> I do too. So. <laughs> Every day. Am I getting fired? Do I ever go yeah. back in the leaps? Yeah. Do I die? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's, I'm probably isolated there. <laughs> Ray's like, no, they love me. I, I mean, I never worked with them. You know, I feel like I had what? We had maybe two moments with Peter or something. So. I mean, it, Peter could be the nicest guy on earth. I, I don't know him. <laughs> no, P Peter's really nice. We've had we've had lunch a few times, like during during shoot days. But yeah, like I I think I've run into like 
it took me forever to even see what Hannah looked like um, because there was just no <laughs> overlap at all. So um, I, I, I have absolutely no opinion of either <laughs> of those people. I think they're great, <laughs> but like I've got it's that's the weird thing with the show is it's so it's structured in such a way that like we never when the guests come on they all work with Ray and the leaps and like, so Caitlin will have that experience or if it's a leap in which, you know, so other people are, are the hologram, then we'll get that experience. But overall, like there truly is very little interaction between the headquarters and the people within the actual adventure. And it, it feels like a shame at times because there's so many cool people that come through the show. Like it is really stacked with, so many like remarkably talented individuals people that bring so many different like styles and genre to the show that i wish i had a chance to see more of like up close um but i'll be lucky if like in the trailer we're passing each other like out of hair and makeup and be like hey you know <laughs> i remember you from that thing it's very cool and and that's about it no um no i, I i'm you know as uh, we have five series regulars on our show and that's fairly lean compared to the shows that I've been in before. And so adding two new characters to kind of uh, ruffle things up, so to speak, it was an exciting prospect for me, especially given um, the actors they are. Um, I was just, you know, it's, it's always fun to, these, these are the things that you look forward to as an audience member as well. Like, you know, you, you read a deadline article of so-and-so who's joining the cast in so-and-so season. And the first thing that I think of is like, oh, how is this gonna, you know, mess things up or make it more exciting? Or I wonder how this can deepen. And, you know, the, the deeper and more confusing, the better, I say. Um, and our characters have to find our ways out of that puzzle. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always excited at the prospect of a, a great new artist joining our team. I wanted to ask about the relationship changes because, uh, you know, uh, the two leads break up. They're no longer together. And that really affects the whole ensemble uh, because it's a new dynamic for everyone. And as fans uh, just watching from the outside, we had no idea that, you know, uh, Caitlin, you were going to be the hologram again, even. So we were like so distraught over the end of the relationship and then the time jump. And then just not knowing if there's a future for you. It's, it's great to know that you're the hologram again and you're forming a friendship. But um, what was it like playing those uh, parts of those characters during those times? Because like, um, there was a couple episodes where it got really heavy between you two. And, and how did that affect everybody on set? Uh, I think it was one of the best arcs I've ever gotten to play as an actor. And one of the least like the things I've least liked to actually do. Like, I don't think Ray and I were ever super happy on the days that we had to like go at it. It Like it bleeds in. You don't want to treat your friend that way or say goodbye. But as an actor, we got so much to do that was so broken out of the first season. So it was very bittersweet, at least in my experience. Um, I don't know, Ray? I had the most fun on those days. <laughs> Just knowing that Caitlin was hurting that much was my favorite thing. Wow. Um, no, you know, uh, you look at the scenes and you're preparing for them and you, these are all the scenes that you've dreamt of doing, right? Like these are the scenes in movies where you go like, wow that really affected me and the fact that now you can be a vehicle for that for our, our audience because like wow like they get to we get to show them this story and we get to be the ones who are embodying these voices and, and emotions and feelings and lives um but then when you're there yeah it is our, our bodies really don't know uh if we're acting or not so you know there is a there is a release that happens where like you, you, there's a lot of adrenaline going and there's a lot of feelings going and your body just kind of dumps out at the end of the day because emotionally you've had to repeat this over and over and over and it's not a good feeling um but it, that's the juicy stuff though that's that's if everything was just all surface then it wouldn't be fun 
Speaking to that point, Ray, when you're talking about your body remembers and you're going through these emotions, one thing that's more evident this season than it was last season, um, and which is different from the Legacy series, is the fact that Ben coexists with his Leap E. So any physical attributes that the Leap E has, you take on as well. So we saw that uh, the most evidently in Secret History when you had to walk with a limp. Um, are you finding ways to incorporate more physical? based on who you might have leapt into as the show was going on? Yeah. Um, talk, talking about layering, um, just another aspect of that. Um, a lot of times the wardrobe informs you, you know, um, if I wear extremely baggy clothes, I move differently. If I wear three inch heels, I move differently. And so I just kind of let that inform me, work from the outside in and What's cool is that I'm I'm building this um like not dissimilar to Neo and the Matrix of like, oh, I know this now. And so I have to remember with each leap that I learned this boxing combination or I learned how to wield a sword in this way because this character might have known how to do that. And so I'm finding myself in situations where physically my body remembers and I have to use now that I have my entire memory back, uh, everything that I've learned in my entire life to incorporate that in, which is sort of um, building this like kind of many all knowing superhero in a way, um, only limited to the body that they're currently in. Um, so it's it's very exciting to layer in that during prep and on the day. And I, I hope it's reading to the audience um, because I think it's a fun thing to track. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's very exciting and you can't escape a cane. Um, you're holding it, you're leaning on it. And yeah. Yeah, that's a fascinating aspect I hadn't even, even considered. I mean, how much is Ray, uh, Ray how, how much is Ben gonna know how to do by like say episode 95? Right. <laughs> Basically, everything that Thor knows how to do. Right. Um, <laughs> if I ever leap into Thor, I'd know exactly what to do with that body. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't even remember your question. Um, no, oh, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. That was the answer. That is the whole answer. The yeah, that, yeah. It's an interesting wrinkle. I hadn't considered that you as the character would retain a lot of that stuff as you go on, even though you're not in that body anymore. But we did see it in Nomad when you knocked the, the guard out, when you knocked the, the, the spy out that was chasing you. And you did it to just like boom, with a plum, just boom, boom, boom. He was dead. <laughs> So uh, it, that'll be interesting to see how they play with that as the series goes on. Yeah, I, I, I hope that it's also something, I mean, it's more for me to track than anybody else, but there was a mention of it that I don't know if, if we kept that in episode six, which was meant to be episode one of the pilot, as you know, but mm -hmm. there was a line where it's like, I'm, and I'm butchering it, but it's like, I can't possibly run anymore. This body that I'm in, he's not used to this sort of running. And like, that is a fun wrinkle to always work in. Um, so yeah, it's exciting when I get to see that show up on the text and I go, oh, that's fun. Such as the limp. <laughs> cool. What was Egypt like? <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> And why didn't everybody yeah, get the hot. They should have made an excuse yeah. for everybody. To mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll answer that one. Um, <laughs> yes. Is it because you weren't spooning? <laughs> if you were spooning um, more, <laughs> Egypt would have been on the cards. For the record, when we were in Egypt, I do yeah. believe Mason was either filming Sandman or slash and also in previews for uh, – uh, their show on the West End Cabaret. So I, I think they were doing fine <laughs> when we were in Egypt. I was fine. I was, I was looking at the pictures and I was like, this is great. This is nice. This, I like that. Yeah. And then, you know, sending little, little emojis. That little gentle London spring you were in. A little different. <laughs> yeah. A little different. <laughs> uh, yeah, Egypt looks great. It looks so <laughs> it was, sandy. It very dusty. Very hot. 
zero zero coverage uh in terms of no trees so we just had to seek shelter but i think the real show was not the camera wasn't pointed towards the real show if you would have seen our first ad trailer and the egyptian crew trying to lock down the civilians from keeping them from getting in the shot that was the real show um it was it was mayhem <laughs> um, there's a scene where uh, Ben runs through the bazaar and all of them are just actively trying not to get the shopkeepers in the shot because they're wearing ball caps and hoodies. And they're like, that's not period. Um, but these <laughs> shopkeepers refuse to go back in their stores because of course, why would they? It's their own store. They can step out if they want to. Um, there you go. That's a, that is a picture of our first AD trailer. Um, <laughs> doing wow. way more work than we're doing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was completely surreal. Our, our cast holding was right in front of the Sphinx. And when you're afforded the luxury of getting bored staring at the Sphinx, you know that you're in a very charmed position. Um, yeah, I, I knew I'd see... There's, there's Grismer. <laughs> He's trying, trying to keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's a bucket list and it's two bucket lists at once getting to do what you love to do while you're getting paid to do it. So it's great. It was great. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the episode Nomad has really pointed out that we are having much more, um, I guess, bolder, more adventurous feeling leaps for season two. Um, do we have more of that in store for the final episodes of the season? Yeah. <laughs> Poor Ray had a rough <laughs> week. Let's just say that. I have not felt bad for Ray for really no reason at all in my life. But this week, he got pretty brutalized. <laughs> so, you know what? <laughs> okay. Is this episode ten? Episode ten? Nine. Yes. Nine. 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 It, well, nine. both. We shot nine and ten nine. this week. We we swapped. Oh so half yeah, but, nine half. Yeah, yeah, half. yeah. Um, Just so yeah. we know what to look out for with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't We're already obvious. Ten. And by ten. we, I mean yeah. The 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 writers are going for it. <laughs> so. So when we see you brutalized on screen, Ray, I'll just think of Caitlin laughing and laughing and laughing. It'll be great. As you should. That's exactly, that's exactly what I was yeah. like. You know it's a bad day when half of the producers come on set and go, we're so sorry. <laughs> are, you, are you okay? Did you, get a, did you get a cuddle off Martin? <laughs> yeah, that's... No, no cuddle for no cuddles for him that day. <laughs> He's falling asleep on his own. <laughs> and uh, I maybe bring the question to to Mason and to Nan. Uh, Nan had said that uh, you guys had had fun being able to step out of the cave, so to speak, because now you're able to go in as a hologram. I, I'm assuming that um, that experience. Uh, continues for you as as this season progresses and i guess mason we hadn't really been able to ask you about that what's it been like to be able to get out of headquarters a little bit and to be on the leaps and on location i mean, i think it's great i um like 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 ray was saying i um probably am a little too uh silly and non-precious about things so i just show up and i'm like pushing things around and ready to like mess with people. Um, and then like the second they call it, you know, we're like, oh, shit, we have to, yeah, we've got a job to do. We got to do this thing. So that was a, it, like, especially fun in the leaps because I think the leaps actively have this energy that we, we replicate a very similar energy throughout most of the episodes in headquarters, which is like down to the wire, trying to figure out a problem. So tensions are always high. The anxiety level is usually operating in a very specific, you know, range um, emotionally. And so we know what that energy is. We kind of like have this, this idea of what headquarters is supposed to feel like um, uh, in almost every scene. Whereas like the leaps do not function in the same way. Like they're, you, they still are in, insanely high energy, but it's a different it's a different kind of problem solving. It's way more active in like a, in a physical way. Um, so just getting to like 
watch how big that world is up close and get to like, especially with the witch episode, you know, the Salem witch trials episode, like getting to see the scope of the sets and the amount of actors that they hire for those scenes and, and working, you know, alongside that many people who can't really like see or, or, or to hear you or touch you or whatever. It's like, it is so much fun. Um, and I, yeah, I love, I just love getting to act with Ray. I think he's such a, an amazing performer and such a, a, a singular kind of individual that like there, there hasn't been, I, I haven't had a scene partner quite like him before that I've, you know, enjoyed <laughs> in, in that specific way. So it's always a nice, a nice treat to get to go in and try to. All right. I'll Venmo you $50 right now. <laughs> 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 uh could you give us a little bit of hint of the upcoming five episodes without spoiling anything but just a little bit to to tease us of uh, what we might be looking forward to yeah i'll take this one mason so, hasn't um, read a goddamn uh, script not one <laughs> script mark not even the script we're shooting mark now <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg, <laughs> president of the United States, and I would like to tell you a like, story listen, guys, before we this... answer that question. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mason, no, no. that story. So we're in Vancouver, and yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and we sit down to read the, to do the first table read with Ernie Hudson cast. He's actually on a computer. All the rest of us are sitting at a physical table in Vancouver. Ernie zoomed in. <laughs> and we, we had to like do the table read. Table read's a very big deal. The table read has to go well before the network, you know, before they're like, okay, here we go, because they're spending lots of money on this. And so we got to set it up all right. Anyway, Mason rocks up. I have my script highlighted, notes everywhere, dog-eared. You know, I was a good student. And Mason rocks up with the envelope completely unopened. <laughs> Mason had not even taken the little twisties off of their script. <laughs> and I said To be fair, it was a new draft and I had read the, read it on the plane on my okay. phone. You know, I had read that on sure. the thing. So I knew what I was and going to I said, into. it helps if you open it. And they said, <laughs> No, I think it'll be fine. And that's how we met. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was fun. You know what? It was fun. It was great. <laughs> it's really easy when you develop a character that is so um, close to you, then the process of discovery, uh, like in real time, actually can be relatively useful. Like I, 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 because I, I do fight with it sometimes. As a fan of the show, I get really excited to want to know what's coming next. But as a human being who also like has other work and and is is very just like tired as a individual of life um often like the thing i don't want to do is is re just like study the next thing until it's coming up so a lot of times i figure out what's going on with those episodes like two or three nights before we're you know actually shooting it um and uh you know, some people don't, don't don't work that way. I think it, it's helpful for Ian because they are so frazzled and like really not um, not ever caught up and and always a little bit behind. Um, that it, mm -hmm. it it really helps me with all of my uh, <laughs> isms that I've sort of developed with the character. And it's yeah, a great there, excuse. That's a beautiful, eloquent rationalization yeah. of. <laughs> off. I'm just gonna <laughs> off and not know how it works. <laughs> wow <laughs> who let you get away with this level of bullshit your whole life <laughs> it, but here's no, the you... thing is i can't do it with every job you know it, it, it is it is character to character like i do my my favorite thing about about specific actors is when they don't approach each role or each like job the same exact way because it does give them it, it, you you develop your own process like that works for that character um and i think that this actually was like a, the 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 unpreparedness or the like chaoticism 
was really helpful for me with developing this character, oddly enough. Um, and so I've sort of like tried to keep it, even if I do have the time to like really dive in, you know, like a week before I'll go, you know what, no, I'm gonna save it. And I'm like, I'm gonna cherish this thing when it comes to, you know, two nights before and I'm like, okay, what's happening? What's going on in this episode? Unless it's like big arc things, you know, I get phone calls about that stuff. Like that's what Martin and Dean will like walk you through a month or two before you even get there, you know, they'll give me a call and be like, so you and Rachel are together and blah, 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 blah. And that's how it like goes through. So I know what like the overarching story is for Ian or the overarching story for me um, well before we even get there. It's just the actual like specificity of the episodes that I, I, I hold on to that secret until right before. Also because the scripts are being changed so drastically, like all the time. So I, you know, you, you can't get too precious or too attached to it because then you watch things that you love, like get cut, like really quickly, um, whether it's budget or, or actors or time constraints, like the, the changes that they make on network television are unlike anything, you know, with like the scripts to Sandman or something like I can read that right now and guarantee that it'll be tweaked by the time I shoot that in a few months. But like, it won't be so dramatic unless there's a massive um, change to setting because they can no longer get that cathedral to shoot this, you know, certain scene. Um, but that the lines are more than likely going to be the same. So you can kind of like read a script like that and begin to get attached to the language. Whereas here, um, at least I can't because they love to change. That is true. In Mason's stuff. defense, like, yeah. Next day it'll be a whole like different your last minute. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I found that I'll be really screwed if I like actively worked hard to memorize whatever the jargon was and then get into it. And they're like, and here's the whole new thing. Now, you know, now Ben's dead and this is blah, 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 blah. And I have to be like, oh, cool. So you still have the memory of that thing and you have to fight against it as you're reading lines that are like close to what it was, but so not the same thing. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a game. Like I have to play games with myself on this show in a way that I, I do not with other To films. answer your question though, I have <laughs> that. <laughs> the question was what's happening next? Yeah, why don't you go back to the question? After <laughs> As I said to Ray once on set, I didn't get this far by not paying attention. So I read everything. <laughs> I'm texting Dean, Drew and Martin like, <laughs> Like they are my roommates. What's <laughs> happening? Um, it's very exciting. Uh, Nomad really tweaks the season to set up what's going to ultimately launch through the next five. And honestly, I was surprised at how big the scope was and how exciting and integral each character becomes like the stakes for everybody starts to go up astronomically which is exactly what you want in an to off ramp the season um like what's happening for ian is enormous and integral and then what's happening for jen has is completely like trying to support what's going on there and like fill in magic's making big decisions obviously there's other things going on in our interpersonal relationships so what i'm just floored by is how they've married the size and scope of things like Nomad, big Egypt, big adventures, big exciting leaps with like, they have not sacrificed at all the leverage and character arcs of everybody else. So I think you guys are gonna be actually really excited. I'm really pumped about it. Um, so it's, it's a really strong five. And I think it's going to set up for, you know, everybody's praying for, but a phenomenal, exciting season three that again will just change the dynamic of the cast. It's just, it's really cool. Wow. When, when Tom walks into the kitchen in that final scene and he says, uh, we found a fragment of a document, that must be some hell of a <laughs> fragment that he found, boy. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, oh, we're, I cannot wait to see how all of this plays out. I'm jealous of all of you that you know, or at least you know some. Mason, you don't know that much, Most but you know. will. <laughs> Most of you know. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know enough to, to skate by. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we've we've kept you guys on for an hour. I, I know that we've talked about a lot of stuff. Um, are there any aspects of either the show or the characters or where just where you're at personally with your journey with Quantum that you'd like to share with, 
with the fan community. And why don't we just go around the table with that? Um, Ray, why don't we start with you? Um, it's been um, a wildly fulfilling journey for so many reasons. And uh, I just love and appreciate our fans for for following along and for contributing to the conversations and um, you know, for the legacy fans that have decided to welcome us as well, we thank you so much because there wouldn't be a current quantum leap without the previous original one. Um, so it, it, it feels really great. Uh, we feel very supported um, and we want to continue to make the most compelling show out there. Um, because we have so many great storytelling tools. Um, and I just think um, everyone should be watching what we're doing because it's pretty exceptional work in so many departments. And um, I, I'm with the exception of Mason, everyone's working very hard. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Ray, you have no idea. My back hurts from having to carry you everywhere. It's, I'm working hard. I am working hard. My quads are just insane. Well, how, how about you, Mason? Is there any any aspect of Ian's character that you'd like to see uh, evolve or any messages for the leapers out there that are listening? Um, yeah, I you know, I, I, I love being on a part of this community like i love being a part of the show and a part of the fabric of the show because it's something that is literally like beamed into people's households and i i've found such a magic with network television and the way that its access gives you an opportunity to like create a a, a different experience of the world for people you know it's it's uh, it reaches a demographic of people that like often you don't have the opportunity to, to reach. And so I, I'm forever grateful that I get to be a part of a show like this, that's on NBC that, you know, and streaming on Peacock, but <laughs> that, um, that literally shows up in people's homes and that they make it like a ritual to sit down and watch, you know, with their loved ones uh, every week, because like, it's a, it's just, it's magical. It's a kind of, magical opportunity to, to um, really like teach people about empathy and to show them things that they might not necessarily have access to because this show gets to tell so many different kinds of stories in a weekly format that like, I, I can't think of many things like it. You know, it's, it's a hundred shows but they're just, it's just one episode of those shows, you know, uh, back to back to back. And so you really can give people like a, a, a relatively unique experience of the world in these really like micro segments. Um, and I will, yeah, I, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget the feeling of like couples in their, you know, 60s coming up to me in the airport telling me that like Ian's their favorite character of even and that they have, you know, like a non-binary grandchild that, you know, they couldn't really communicate with clearly before, didn't necessarily have the understanding of, but because they've had more access and more like it's been more part of the vernacular of their weekly, you know, entertainment they now like can approach their, you know, family member with so much more understanding and empathy and interest and less, uh, be less dismissive of, of certain things that I think like, if you don't see it represented, if you don't see certain things represented in massive media, like it is easy to kind of dismiss it as a smaller portion of the world or of, of you know, uh, a smaller demographic of the world. When in the reality is, it's just like, there are so many leaps and bounds that the entertainment industry needs to make when it comes to inclusion and representation that like this show just naturally kind of blew out of the water with the cast that it put together. It put like some of the funniest, warmest, smartest people in a room. And we all just happen to look different and be of different ages and of different, you know, backgrounds and races and identities. And like, it's so, so cool. Cause it, the, this cast like looks like the world that 
I'm legitimately a part of. Like it looks like the people I see every day. Um, and it's not like this glistening, you know, perfect version of like what we think, you know, humanity should look like. Like this is what humanity looks like, um, which is what Quantum Leap is all about. So um, thank you to everyone who's, you know, tunes in weekly and is a part of this and a part of our lives because it, it, a show like this does have the capacity to, I, to change lives, I think. I think for Jen, I just like to see, I'm, I'm just hoping for um, just more opportunities to sort of flesh out the relationships between her and the people she loves. I think um, spending a little more time with Ben would be fun uh, because I think now that she's done it, you know, the first time she went into a leap, she was very reticent and, um, and, and she felt like she didn't have a place there. But, um, after that, I think, you know, she had one, then two under her belt. And now I feel like you have an opportunity to see your friend, you know, you're going to want to see your friend. <laughs> and so I feel like that would be fun. I think it would also be fun to see a little bit more of, um, either what she's been up to in the last three years or, um, maybe some of the, the past choices that she's made in her life before she found the team. Um, maybe because again, they, she broke a lot of laws um, <laughs> and perhaps hung around a lot of people that, um, that, uh, that are very different from her life now. I, I wonder if there's any repercussions from that. Um, and uh, to people who watch the show, just thanks for watching. Um, and, uh, and, uh, just, I really appreciate it. And I hope you, I hope you enjoy the rest of season two, because I think we, we have some pretty fun, explosive stuff coming up. Cool. And, uh, to hologram number one, Caitlin, why don't you, why don't you bring us home? And, uh, while answering the question, feel free to give Ray and Mason as much shit as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I just want to show with Manrissa because she's nice and smart and does her homework. Um, no, mm -hmm. so it, it, truthfully, I think, I mean, I th I'll, I'll take a more technical TV side answer to this question because I think everybody just really summed it up beautifully about what it feels like to be on this show and what the show can mean to people. Um, but I think the show is doing something incredibly unique, right? Like, so we took so a show that was already a bit of a unique bird uh the original quantum leap that had a very specific setup and we took that setup and we expanded on it but we did it in a way that honored and brought the old show with us and tried to bring as many of the original fans as we could and i think i think we've accomplished that mission to to a great extent, which has brought everybody on this screen an immense amount of joy. But then what's happened that is even special, I think more special, is then we took that expanded concept and we just kept going. We said, well, what else can this show do then? What can a cast of five core characters do? What, what happens if you break the mold? If you take the original hologram leaper and you break them apart and you start to have to use people differently. What happens in the real world when somebody has to contend with something this big? Um, and then where are we in television and what kind of breadth can we actually take a network show, by the way, and create, go to Egypt? I mean, there's not a lot of captains that could take us here and Martin Garrow is one of them, right? Um, so, and then to know that Basically, episode eight is like a gear shift change in season two that will explode throughout the rest of the season. Just, I mean, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 are just enormous in breadth, in character. And then where it's going to leave us, I mean, it just sets up a brand new, almost not show, but new chapter and new breakage and new remolding of what this show can be. So. I mean, I think when it comes to like in the age of reboots, which I don't love the, the saying, but I, I, I understand it, it, it with how many things have been recycled recently. I, I honestly think that, I mean, not to tutor on her, but we did it the best in the terms of like, we took the heart of the show and incorporated that and then moved it to today. 
rather than just recycling something that worked. And, and I think we did that well. And I'm just impressed and blown away by what these actors have, have brought and, and what these writers are doing. So it's a ride. You can't expect the same thing day to day outside of like fun relationships and a fun leap, but everything else, no promises. Like <laughs> it will change, which is cool, I think. And thank you for taking the ride with us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking forward to the rest of that ride. Uh, what an exciting note to end on. Thank you so much, Raymond, Caitlin, Nanrissa, Mason, and in spirit, Ernie and Peter and Eliza. Uh, we are so thrilled to be able to talk to you. And um, thank you for appearing with us here on the Quantum Leap podcast. Of course. It's great talking to you. <laughs>